welcome to AGK's Vinyl Life. I'm your host, Anthony Kay, and today's Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. And on this week's episode, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, my last episode just over a week ago was, of course, on the yearly Vinyl Tag 2021, where I did my responses to that. And on this week, I'm going to be doing uh, responses to a couple more Vinyl Tags and just having a little bit of fun on this week's episode before I get back to my regular format of the way I like to do videos. But I wanted to jump on these two tags uh, because they're fun tags and uh, just have a little bit of fun this week on my video. So what I've decided to do is a mashup, that's right, a mashup of Vinyl Richie's totally random vinyl tag and uh, the non-vinyl tag by Static Traveler. So I'm mashing those two tags together uh, I've taken 10, 10 questions from Vinyl Richie's uh, 20 questions, and I've taken 5 questions from the Static Traveler's 10 questions. So I've got 15 questions that I've pulled from both those tags, and I'm going to be mashing them up and doing my response to those. And then I'm adding 3 questions myself that I'm going to be calling my AGKs, the good, the bad, and the ugly Vinyl Tag 2021. That's right, the good, the bad, and the ugly Vinyl Tag 2021, and maybe some of you will want to jump in on my three questions of the good, the bad, and the ugly Vinyl Tag. We'll see. You're all welcome to jump in on that one. So I'm going to do the tags sequentially here. So I'm going to be doing the, the, the questions from the Vinyl Richie Tag first, followed by the Static Traveler questions, and finishing up with my AGK's Good, the Bad, and the Ugly Tag uh, to finish the video off. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a warning out there for, for you that are squeamish right now. The good, the bad, and the ugly could get very ugly. So if you're squeamish, you might not want, not want to watch the end of the good, and the bad, and the ugly tag. Just, just a warning. Because you, if you're squeamish about records, I don't know. I can't be held responsible. But at any rate, uh, let's have some fun this week. So let's get on with it. Let's get on with Vinyl Richie's totally random vinyl tag. And I've picked 10 questions from that. And the first question I picked was, show an album without Ringo. Well, that's pretty easy. Here's Golden Earring. <laughs> There's no Ringo on Golden Earring, uh, but there is a Golden Ring. Ah, yeah, there's a Golden Ring, but there's no Ringo. Golden Earring. And this is eight miles high, and uh, honestly, I highly recommend this album. One of Golden Earring's best. Uh, the second side of this album is a 19 minute version of The Birds, Eight Mile High, that is just outstanding. Standing. A fantastic album by Golden Earring. Very prog, rockish, very psychedelic, and very prog mixed together. Highly recommend. But yeah, ain't no Ringo on this album. But there is a Golden Ring. Yeah. And also an album without Ringo on it is Stax. And Stax does the Beatles. There's no Ringo, but there's Ringo's drum kit. Where'd Ringo go? He left his drum kit. But this also segues into the next question I chose, show an album with a Beatles connection. And this is an album with the Beatles connection. This is the Stax Does the Beatles a Record Store Day release, which featured uh, cover songs of Beatles uh, songs done by various uh, Stax records recording artists, such as Otis Redding, David Porter, Booker T and the MGs, Steve Cropper, Carla Thomas, the Marques, Isaac Hayes, Reggie Miller. It's actually a really good spin and they do covers of various Beatles songs and of course they've simulated the White Album by the Beatles including even the embossed the Beatles on here and you got you got Ringo's drum kit. So no Ringo but you got his drum kit and this also goes down as show an album with a Beatles connection. Now I know it was a guilty pleasure without a Beatles connection but I'm just going to show a couple albums with a Beatles connection. That is the first. The Stax. And my second album with the Beatles connection, We're Only In It For The Money by Frank Zappa and the Mothers, where they uh, quite uh, jokingly recreated the Sgt. Pepper album cover, as you can see here. Frank Zappa and the Mothers, We're Only In It For The Money, with a uh, tribute, obviously, to the Beatles Sgt. Pepper album cover. Uh, question number three. Uh, let's see, question number three is, show an album with a side of music over 30 minutes long. Well, look what I've got. I've got Golden Earring again. And this is Golden Earring, uh, the greatest rock sensation, uh, uh, short, short form just called rock sensation. It was a, comp a comp album 
uh, released in, uh, I believe, Germany or Denmark. Uh, I believe Germany. Yeah, made in Germany. This was released in Germany, and it was a comp album that featured tracks from uh, Golden Earrings albums up to the Switch album. And each side of this comp album, this is a really great comp album too, and each side of this comp album runs 34 minutes long. That's right, 34 minutes long, so you get 68 minutes of music on one record. And I don't think there's any loss in sound quality. It sounds great. It's a re really great sounding pressing on Caras Carousel Records. And it sounds great, and 34 minutes per, of music per side. So that answers that question. The next question was, uh, question, al uh, question number four, show an album that has less than 30 minutes for the entire album. So I decided for that one, let's pull out The Ventures. And this is a comp as well. This is called The Ventures. Golden Greats, which I believe was their first comp album. They've had a lot of comp albums, but the Ventures, Golden Greats. Get it. We'll get it. Gatefold. Ventures, Golden Greats. This album ran 29 minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> so that's just under the wire there. I, I, I looked for one that would, would, come, would come in just under the 30 minutes, and I found one. This one runs at 29 minutes and 37 seconds. The Ventures, Golden Greats, an album that runs under 30 minutes in length, totally for the whole album. And that leads us to question number five, uh, a best of album with a member by the name of Bob. Well, that was really easy. It's Bob Seeger. That's right, Bob Seeger, greatest hits. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, greatest hits. You couldn't ask for any more Bob than that. Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, greatest hits. And that was a best of album with a member by the name of Bob. Uh, question number six. Uh, an album, show an album with an eye on the cover. Well, I've got two here that have eyes on the cover, both by the same artist. The first is The Eyes of Alice Cooper. That's right. The Eyes of Alice Cooper. No brainer there. And just for a good, just to throw in one more for good measure, From the Inside by Alice Cooper. <laughs> Eyes from the Inside from Alice Cooper. There you go. Showed a couple albums with with an eye on the cover. Uh, show an album. Uh, question number seven. Show an album with an illustrated eye on the cover. Well, I've got here Eye in the Sky by Alan Parsons Project. Eye in the Sky by Alan Parsons Project with the illustrated eye on the cover. Eye in the Sky, Alan Parsons Project. Some great prog. Pop prog. They, by this time, they were more pop than prog. Um, but uh, Eye in the Sky, Alan Parsons. Uh, number eight. Show an album with a group in the eye. Well, we're going to go back to Alice Cooper again. This is the Love It to Death album, and this is the one with the uncensored cover with Alice Cooper's thumb sticking out of the fly in, in his pants, simulating a certain body part that was very controversial, so they had to erase his thumb because people were mis mistaking it for something else. But there's a group in the eyes of Alice Cooper. You've got the Alice Cooper band hiding in the eyes of Alice Cooper. So there you go. An album with a group in the eye. Number nine that I chose from Vinyl Richie's totally random vinyl tag. Number nine is an album with a hot bass player. Well, I've got two albums here with hot bass players on them. And these are both comps. Again, we're doing comps. Uh, these are, this is a sampler comp with various groups on it. But they're all girl groups. They're all 60s garage rock girl groups. And uh, definitely have hot bass players. As you can see by the girl on the extreme side of the album. This is Girls with Guitars. The first volume of Girls with the Guitars, 
And there's a hot bass player right there. And in fact, there's a whole bunch of hot bass players on the back cover as well. And the second one is Girls with Guitars Take Over, which was a follow-up to Girls with Guitars with more 60s girl, girl group garage bands and also another hot girl with a bass, bass player on the cover and many more hot girl bass players on this album. So you got a whole, you got a whole corral here, a whole smorgasbord of hot bass players on those two albums. Uh, and last but not least, uh, number 10 on the Vinyl Richie Totally Random tag. Number 10, an album with three nerds, a hot dude with glasses, and a hot girl. So I've chosen for this one, The Shocking Blue. And this is the Singles Collection Part 1. This is a Record Store Day release on Music on Vinyl, numbered edition, The Shocking Blue, Singles Collection. And yeah, there's three, three nerds. I think it was three nerds. Yeah, three nerds, a hot dude with glasses, and a hot girl. Well, there's the three nerds. Here's the hot dude with the sunglasses, with the glasses right here. I'm the hot dude with, with the glasses. The three nerds and the hot girl. That's right. I'm putting myself in there. The Shocking Blue Singles Collection. Three nerds, a hot girl, and a hot dude with glasses. <laughs> okay. So there's, uh, there's tw 10 questions answered in the Vinyl Richie uh, tag. The totally random tag. Now I'm going to do five questions from the non-vinyl tag that was uh, put out by Static Traveler. Check out his channel, Static Traveler. I will put links below to uh, both the Static Traveler's um, video about this and Vinyl Richie's video about this. I will put them in below in the comments. So you want to look them up and jump on those tags if you haven't seen them already, do so. And as I always say, uh, if you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up always make everybody feel good. And if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss any of my videos. I try to do one of these videos every Monday or Tuesday. And uh, comments are always welcome below, down below. I try to respond to all the comments I get. I really try to respond to them all. And last but not least, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram uh, at AGK underscore Lifetime of Vinyl, where I try to post my spin of the day every day. And that's it. That's that's enough for the, sh the, the shameless self-advertising and plugging of my channel. And now, continuing on with part two of my video, here's five questions from the non-vinyl tag started by Static Traveler. The first question is, an album replica or an album with unusual packaging? So I chose the latter, unusual packaging, and this is Fear Inoculum by Tool. This was released a couple years ago, Fear Inoculum by Tool. And this is their deluxe CD version of the album that was released. And what is unusual about this packaging is it actually contains a video player, a rechargeable video player that you can recharge with a USB cable that comes included in the CD that plays this very hypnotic video which I'll just show you a few seconds of here. How cool is that for unusual packaging? An LCD screen video player rechargeable that plays some completely trippy visu visuals with music. Very crazy. Tool, Fear Inoculum, quite the Quite the thing. Uh, so question number two. Uh, a box set, show you a box set with the most CDs. Well, that was an easy one in my collection. This is my box set, and it just happens to be Golden Earring again. And this is Golden Earring. And this is the complete studio recordings of Golden Earring in a box set. And in here, you have all. 26 studio albums by Golden Earring, as well as three CDs containing all their singles and B-sides and unreleased tracks, and a book about the band. And all of these CDs are done in the old mini album jacket version of the records. 
of the original records right through their entire library. All 26 albums, three bonus discs, a book, so a total of 29 CDs in this box set. Golden Earring, complete studio recordings. Uh, question number three. I show a music magazine. I've got two I'm going to show you here. This is a magazine I try to read uh, as much as possible. I haven't been obviously picking up picking it up in the last year as much as I used to because of the pandemic and not being able to go shopping in stores and browse around in stores. Uh, but I really enjoy this magazine and it is classic rock magazine. And I just picked a random issue here. This one I believe has David Bowie and Mick Ronson on the cover. Uh, classic rock magazine, really love this presentation. And, and one of the things I really like about this magazine is they give you a CD every month too, a sampler CD, which always has really great music and some of the sampler CDs that I have bought, that, that have come with these magazines, not bought, but some of the sampler CDs that have come with these magazines have actually gone out and inspired me to look up artists and buy music from those artists. So the sampler CDs definitely do, do work and do inspire you to uh, buy music from their artists. So I love the CDs that come with these. I love reading this magazine, very informative, formative, classic rock magazine, pick it up wherever you can, um, a rock magazine. And I'm going to show you one more, and this was a, something I picked up many, 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 many years ago. It was a two-pack from, from a comic comic book company called uh, Rocket Record, Rocket Comics, Rocket Comics. And this was uh, volume number one, issue number one, of Santana, the comic. Can you believe it? Santana, the comic. And yeah, it's a Santana comic. And also, issue number one of Lita Ford, of course, from Runaways fame. Lita Ford, who's on the back cover right there. Is Santana on the back cover of this one? No. Not Lita Ford, who's on the back cover. But Lita Ford, the comic. Crazy stuff. What? They'll make a comic about anything, I think. <laughs> but there you go. Some kind of, kind of rock magazines and comics and things. Something different. <laughs> Craziness. Crazy stuff. Question number four from the non-vinyl tag is show a non-music CD. Well, I've only got, I think, I might have a couple more things, but I, this one was the first to come to my head. And this is a, a CD. This is Craig Schumacher, Love Master's Greatest Hits Live. This is a stand-up comedy CD, a two CD of a stand-up comedy set. This is uh, recorded at various shows. Craig Schumacher, the uh, stand-up comedian, funny stuff. So this is a non-music CD for sure, as it's a stand-up comedy CD that I got many, 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 many moons ago. I don't even know where I got that. Uh, and last up, uh, question number five that I'm doing from the non-vinyl tag. A music DVD you would recommend? Well, I decided to pick this one. This is Bob Marley and the Wailers, Live at the Rainbow, a fantastic performance. Of course, this was also re released on LP. Bob Marley, Live at the Rainbow. Fantastic performance. But what I really like about this uh, DVD is not only do you get the Live at the Rainbow, the complete Live at the Rainbow concert on here with Trenchtown Rock, Them Belly Full, I Shot the Sheriff, Rebel Music, Lively Up Yourself, Crazy Bald Head, War, No More Trouble, The Heathen, No Woman No Cry, Jammin', Get Up, Stand Up, and Exodus. Not only do you get that, but you get disc two because there's a two disc set in here and you get Caribbean Nights, which is the award-winning 100 minute documentary on the life of Bob Marley. So not only do you get a fantastic concert performance of Bob Marley and the Wailers, but you get a documentary on Bob Marley himself. Double bang for your buck in this one. Show a DVD you would recommend. There we have it. So those are the five questions I chose from the non vinyl tag by the Static Traveler. And to finish off my video, I have decided to do three questions that I'm calling the good, the bad, and the ugly. Vinyl Tag 2021, AGK's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. <laughs> Vinyl Tag 2021. And let's start with the good. And question number one is show five albums by a band who, or artist who have more than 10 studio albums 
that are never shown in the vinyl community. So five albums by a band or, or solo artist who has more than 10 studio albums who you never ever see anybody show in the vinyl community. So I have chosen this band right here. These are one of my favorite bands of all time. They are definitely up there in the top 20 bands of all time for me. And this band has well over 10 studio albums and still records studio albums to this day. They started out in the mid late eighties are continually record studio albums. I think they have at least 11 or 12 studio albums now, uh, plus some uh, comps with unreleased material and things. Uh, not ex and excluding live material, but they do have, uh, I think, 11 studio albums right now, or 12. Um, they are known as The Mission. Um, they're a UK band, and in, the, and in North America, they were renamed to The Mission UK. Uh, they were known here in North America as The Mission UK because at the time, um, when they were really big in the late 80s, early 90s, there was another band called The Mission in North America. So they didn't want to get things confused. So they were they were they were labeled in the United States, the Mission UK. Uh, I know them as the Mission. They are from the UK, uh, simply as the Mission. And fantastic band. They're 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 called uh, goth rock, alternative, post punk, hard rock. They're all in that category. Uh, it's a smoosh of all those categories together. I think they're wonderful. The Mission, and these are five albums by The Mission that I would recommend that anybody listen to, and I would start with them, and I would play them in the order that I'm showing them here, which is also chronological order. The first one being called Children by The Mission, a fantastic spin. Children, I can't seem to open record albums today. Children by The Mission, fantastic spin. The Mission Children. And this was from 1980, I don't know, 1987, 88, somewhere like that. Uh, I think the next one was like 1989. And I love, absolutely love this album. Absolutely love it. This is the mission and carved in sand with the gorgeous butterfly on a wheel on this album. Look them up. The mission, they are spectacular. And this is carved in sand. Uh, 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 an incredible spin, this album. Carved in sand. That's another one. Uh, Mask by The Mission, which I believe was from around 1993. Mask, another great spin by The Mission. Mask. Look them up. Check them out. Highly recommend. I never have seen anybody show anything by The Mission ever. I mean, maybe somebody has in the vinyl community because there's so many people out there, but certainly the channels I surf, I've never seen The Mission shown, and I think they deserve a little more showing and credit, and that's why I chose them. Uh, next up is Neverland, and this was from 1995, a double LP. This is a recent reissue of the Mission's Neverland, which I believe was originally only released on CD. And this is a double LP, and I believe this was on a colored vinyl, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's on a smoky vinyl. Current uh, reissue from a couple years ago. And you think I can get in there? No. The Mission, Neverland. That's a fourth album. And one more. An absolutely fantastic album. Another Fall from Grace, released just a couple, uh, I think in 2016 this one came out. 2016, Another Fall from Grace by The Mission. An absolutely spectacular spin. Look them up, The Mission, otherwise known as The Mission UK in, in North America, but I think that UK thing has been dropped. Uh, now everybody just knows them as The Mission. Look them up, fantastic group. And that was my first question of the good, the bad, and the ugly. That was the good five great albums by a band who have more than 10 studio albums that are never shown in the vinyl community. Question number one. And now question number two, the bad. And this might be controversial, but this is the bad. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. So this is the bad. And uh, the question is, show five albums you have seen the vinyl community show too much and don't want to see shown in 2021. That's right. Five albums that are always shown have been shown too much and you don't want to see them anymore. You don't want to see people showing them in 2021. And these are the five I picked and I'm going to probably get, get some flack from this one, but this is the bad and this is all in fun. But in all seriousness, <laughs> these are my five picks. For albums I don't want to see anybody show in 2021. And, and the reason I don't want to see anybody show them in 2021, like I said, is they're shown too much, too, 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 too much. 
and chances are we all own these albums anyhow so we don't really need to show them because we probably all have them so why do we show them and try to inspire people to buy them when chances are 98 percent of the vinyl community already have these albums so these are my five albums i don't want to see anybody show in 2021 Fleetwood Mac rumors. Jethro Tall, Aqualung. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. I mean, you can almost say any Pink Floyd, but there's some Pink Floyd albums that aren't shown very often. But Dark Side of the Moon, come on, people. We all know what it looks like. We all have all these albums. So don't, why are we showing them? Pretty much anything by Led Zeppelin. And last but not least, pretty much anything by the Beatles, but there are Beatles lovers out there, so I'll be nice to you Beatles lovers. But this one here, Sgt. Pepper, we see this one so much. I think I see Sgt. Pepper shown by somebody almost on a daily basis. So please, in 2021, no more Sgt. Pepper, please. So those are the bad. And finally, question number three. And that is going to be done in another location. I'm going to relocate the camera and lights for the final question. The question you've all been waiting for. The ugly. So you're all probably wondering what I'm doing standing in my garage with Sgt. Pepper. Well, as I said a second ago, uh, the third question involved me relocating to properly answer the third question. And the third question in my AGK's Good, the Bad, and the Ugly Vinyl Tag 2021 is, the third question is not really a question as so much as an action. And the third question is, destroy the last album you showed. So Sergeant Pepper gets that honor. And this is a, a warning to the, you sensitive Beatle fans uh, who may not like violence against the Beatles. Don't worry, no actual Beatles are harmed in this video though I can't say the same for this album so question number three destroy the last album you showed Sgt. Pepper and this is a first OG US OG pressing on capital of Sgt. Pepper but sadly it's going to meet its face as fate as it has been shown too many times in the VC and this will be one less copy of Sgt. Pepper that will get shown this year or ever in the VC of Sgt. Pepper. So shall we get on with it? I think this is gonna be fun. Sensitive Beatle fans, you may wanna turn off the video now. So shall we start with the cover? Well, it would appear it didn't sustain too much damage. So I think a pair of garden shears should, should solve that problem, don't you? This isn't working out too good. That ain't working out too good either. These Beatles albums are pretty indestructible, I'd say. Oh, the heck with it, huh? Goodbye, Sergeant Pepper. And now, on with the record. I heard the news today, oh boy. Another Beatles record bought the farm. You say hello, and I'll say goodbye.
until next time, vinyl community, as I always say, rock and roll. <laughs>